Hi, my name's Tom, and I'm here today to talk to you about NFTs. What's an NFT? Uh, everywhere you look online, people are talking about NFTs. I've made X amount of money with NFTs, become a millionaire with NFTs. But what actually are they? Um, I think the record for a NFT being sold is 69 million. That was done earlier on this year. And a tweet, a tweet for nearly $3 million. A tweet. This is crazy money. Or is it? What are they and how people are making money from them? That's what we're going to try to talk to you today about and hopefully I can explain it in a clear and concise way that you can walk away and go, that's what an NFT is. Let's give it a shot, shall we? So, an NFT, what actually is it? What If you buy an NFT, what are you getting? Like, do you physically get a piece of paper? Do you get a email, what, what is it that you're buying? Well, in short, an NFT is representation of the ownership of something that's unique. This can be something, a digital product, or it could be a physical product. And what NFT stay, stands for, the abbreviation stands for non-fungible token. And the key to this is the fungibility. I don't even know if fungibility is a word, but fungible part of NFT, so non-fungible token. Um, so. What is it? Why is that so key to NFTs, the fungibility? So a fungible item is an item that can be interchangeable because they're identical to each other. Non-fungible is they're not interchangeable as they're not identical to each other. The best way to explain this is with examples. So something that is fungible, you don't care which one you get because it has the same value. Banknotes, perfect example of that. You don't care which 50 euro or 50 dollars that you get, as long as it's an it's an oak. They all have the same value. The same with a TV, a light, a camera, all have the same value when they're purchased. But say you had a banknote and that banknote had a picture reversed on it, and there was no other banknotes in the world that had this picture reversed on it, that would then become unique and it would become non-fungible. Because and because of its uniqueness, the value of it now is different to every other note in the world. Another example when I'm explaining this to people would be footballs. So the Adidas Telstar 18 soccer ball, that was played in the World Cup in 2018 and it was played in the World Cup final in 2018. So they've made millions of these balls, but there's only a few that's been played with in the World Cup and there's only a few that's been played with in the World Cup final. So these footballs now become non-fungible because they're unique, they can't be replaced. They are footballs that are played in the World Cup final. They are different to all the rest of them, but at the same time identical to the rest of them. So how do you prove this? So this is where we move on to how do you prove that this football is now more valuable than this football, even though they are identical. And that's the part that always lost me when I, when I was looking at NFTs, this part always lost, how can you prove that this is more valuable than this? So hopefully the football analogy works with everybody because let's, to be honest with you, it's gonna be playing a lot in this video. Um, so, as I was saying, how do you prove this? Well, unfortunately, there's only one way to explain this, and I have to kind of explain blockchain as well. Um, and blockchain will have its own video. I haven't made it yet, but you know, I have to give it, I have to give it a shot. Um, but in short, blockchain is a system of recording information in a way that makes it difficult, not impossible, to change, hack, or cheat. Um, a blockchain is essentially a digital book of transactions that is duplicated across an entire network and it, it basically you can't fudge it, you can't break it. it. Once it's on the blockchain, it can't be tampered with. Let's just put it like that. Um, and using this technology, that it will ensure that the ownership is impossible to duplicate. So you cannot claim that oh, I own that football, no, you own that football, this is the real football, that's not the, fun, the football, and so on. So now that you know the fundamentals idea, the fundamentals to blockchain, I'll give you an idea of how this would work. So FIFA have the football, and then they would register the football on a exchange. So OpenSeas, um, Rarible, just, just, there's loads of them there. So they register that football. And what they actually register is the information about the football. So they say this was played in the final, this scored whatever goal, um, the make, the weight of it, and most importantly, the serial number of it. Because the serial number would be the thing that identifies it from every other football. So. Once they have that, they'll create a smart contract with different clauses in it, which I'll talk about later. But they will they'll make this they'll make a contract, and then they'll put the football up for auction um, along with the NFT. And the NFT will be the proof of ownership. 
Now, once it's up on the auction site, people start bidding on it. So, and a key part to this is that they will bid using cryptocurrency. Most likely Ethereum being the most common, but that is key to this whole thing. So they don't pay cash, they pay in cryptocurrency. And then once the bid has been accepted, FIFA then transfers the ownership of the NFT from their wallet that they've created on the on the platform and send it to the person who is now has ownership of the football. So they can prove fundamentally that FIFA themselves have registered the football with this serial number. So when they have the football with the NFT, they know exactly where it came from. Um, and they know who's owned it before them because it creates a log. So if you sell it on, you the next person will see, okay, this has been three steps from FIFA. Um, now this is a very, very, very simplified version of this. Um, so like there's probably much more steps and I'm just giving a flow of, you know, a simplified version. Um, okay, hopefully the football analogy has worked. It made sense to me, so hopefully it's making sense to you. So now that you understand the flow of it now how are people making money from it so you understand now where the football gets put on the exchange and people bid on it and um, so for this i need to do another um example and i'm going to use digital art because that's that's where we've seen all the big transactions all the the money that's being made is basically being in digital art and the question that's always asked is why pay that much for digital art when you can download it to your desktop and you have it there Somebody creates something, here, right click, save as, there you go, you have it as well. Why pay 60 something million for it or whatever it is for that tweet? Well, that's the, to be honest with you, this is the main reason that I started researching this topic. And the simple answer is yes, you can download it onto any, you can download it on your computer, but theoretically you can do that with any piece of art. You can do the same with the Mona Lisa. You can download a picture of that onto your thing, and but that doesn't mean that you own it. It doesn't mean that you have the original, and it certainly means that you cannot make any money from it. You see, because as the NFT is transferred to the new owner, the copyright is gone with that as well. So this will stop anybody else, or should stop anybody else, making any money off the digital art as you own the copyright to it. So each, art, each piece of art is put up for auction and people bid on it, and that's it that's as simple as that so people are either buying to support the artist or there's an awful lot of like small nft transactions going on they're not all in the millions but people will to support the artist to create a collector and hope the investment grows over time but if you really think about it are, is digital art valuations any crazier than paintings if you break them down a painting is just put into components it's just a canvas some paint and the artist puts it all together and then the public decides on its value by purchasing that painting. The same is this with digital art. Um, an artist creates a artist, uh, uh, an artist creates a picture and it's put up onto an auction site and us the public are bidding on it. So we're creating the value. If nobody put bids on it, there's no value. Another benefit of using NFTs to sell anything is the ability to add a sell-on clause. Because you're using a smart contract here and everything is done digitally, if somebody sells something on in the future, you can take a cut. Let's, for example, 60 million for a piece of art. Fair enough. But if that sells for 100 million in 10 years' time, the because it's done digitally the, and there's a sell-on clause, 10% of that could go towards the could go to the artist. Um, and nobody can change this if the nft moves it will automatically do it because that's what a smart contract is designed to do it may seem ridiculous some may think the tech sounds nuts um, and others might say this is a way to get rich my thinking personally it's it's very similar to the dot-com boom it's happening all over again eventually it will all come crashing down i, I personally i think it's inevitable however so did the so did the dot com boom. The dot, it crashed, but that didn't get rid of the internet. The technology still survived, and the internet as we know it today is what we got. So the crash will come at some stage, and what what's going to be left is the NFT technology as we will know it. And as I'm about to touch on, there's actually an awful lot of uses, um, real world uses for NFTs, not just digital art. So some other uses of the NFT technology. Um, Basically, anything that is unique and it needs proof of ownership. 
So, a few items off my head. I promise they're not listed in front of me and I'm not reading off a teleprompter. But, deeds to a car or your house. Tickets to a real world event, some legal documents, domain names, in-game purchases, which by the way, in-game purchases will probably be really, really, really big with NFTs. Fashion items, I've heard of 30,000 euro handbags being sold with an NFT, so you can prove that you own this bag. I suppose it makes sense if you're spending 30,000 euro on a handbag. And um, there's music and there's many, many more. And now, hopefully, in this kind of nine minute video that I've explained to you how NFTs work and the process and how people are making money off them. Um, it's just an overview. Any any thoughts that I've said in the video, they're, they're my own. They're, I've, I've done some research. I'm no way an NFT expert. I've done my research and recorded the video. Now, if you're still here and you're still watching, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. It'll help a guy out. Um, but apart from that, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.